Hey, it's Mark Edward Lewis. I'm here at Cinema Sound Studio B. You know, a lot of you have asked about in the, on the cinemasound.com forum, how do we get mono files to become stereo? Not just, you know, how do we, you know, make them go left and right so that they fill up a stereo channel, but how do, how do we really make them feel stereophonic, even if they come from a mono source? And on Cinema Sound, and especially on the MZ Education, we talk about how to use plugins, especially some of the ones that are in Adobe Audition, Waves Audio, Isotope, some of these great plugins plugins that use all kinds of fun ways of shifting phase and delaying certain frequencies and all kinds of stuff like this. Really, really useful. But what if you don't want to do that? What if you don't have any of these plugins? And what if, you know, the plugins that you've been trying to use on the mono material aren't working? Well, I'm going to show you the DIY cheap no plugins other than a simple EQ that you can use to get this effect on any mono signal and turn it into the widest stereo thing you can imagine, even a mono dialogue track. Check it out. All right, we're here in Adobe Audition, and we have a simple mono ambience that we've recorded. It's about a minute long, very simple ambience. Let's check it out. Pretty, you know, pretty nominal, nominal, even over here, over here at the end. Some cool stuff in the background, but pretty, pretty useful. Obviously, way too loud now, but. And we hate how they do crossfades out on our ambience tracks, so we will kill that. So just slightly less than a minute in length, but it's mono. And ideally, you want to record and get yourself stereo or even 5.1 ambiences, but sometimes you're stuck with a room tone that you really want to use as an ambience or even just a mono ambience like this. So what do we do? Well, we have another article where I show you how to make a sort of a do-it-yourself stereo uh, enhancement using EQs and things. But in this case, what if you don't want to do that and, and you've got, you have no time, you need to do something really, really fast? although the other way is really fast once you get used to it. Well, here's something that you can do with this simple mono file to make it super wide. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to go here. I'm going to use the arrow tool, and I'm going to create another mono track. Now I have two tracks. We're going to call this left ambience, and we're going to call this one right ambience. And I'm just going to go somewhere here in about the middle or so, and then I'm going to cut this ambience. I have a key command for that. I'm going to take this ambience down here like this, and then I'm going to make them roughly the same. And now I have the same sound, really, it's the same ambience, but at different times. And when I layer them on top of each other, you basically get double the ambience. It's like two of the same thing, although they're happening and happening at different times. But once I pan one hard left and pan one hard right, now listen. It's super crazy wide. Let's go back to the way it was. I'm just gonna do this and mute. Put this one back in mono. Blech. And then back we go to this new stereo enhanced version. So much better. I mean, incredibly wide. Now, this isn't, you know, your best case scenario. You would really want to have recorded it in stereo. But you can see how quickly we were able to turn this otherwise dull, dead ambience into a really nice wide stereo file. Now, what if you needed it to go even wider. What especially if you needed to do, if you needed to also take mono and fill surround channels with this? Well, like we talk about in the cinema side education, you always want to have different ambiences in the back. I mean, that's how life really is. Even now in your listening environment where you are, what's happening behind you is really different than what's happening in front of you. But let's say you didn't want to do that, and you wanted to have something that was different enough in the rear, but had the same feel, but didn't create a mono space. And if we were just to take this stereo ambience and dump it into the surrounds, it would feel very monaural. You'd have stereo width this way, but nothing this way. So how do we solve this? Well, Adobe Audition has a wonderful built-in plugin called the Stereo Enhancer, and we're going to use that to good effect here. We can't use it on a mono file, so what we need to do is route these two channels to a stereo bus. Now that they're stereo, we can do that. We're going to go to multi-track, add stereo bus. 
Let's drag it down here and we're going to call this the ambient bus surround. Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to hear this because we're streaming in stereo. But let's route this. Let's say this was good. And we're going to route this sound to this bus as well. And we're going to go to the routing tab. Here's the sends. We're going to say, please send this to the ambience bus. And please send this to the ambience bus. And then we're also going to, in fact, let me just show you this in the mixer window. A little bit easier to see. Here's our two mono ambiences here. We're going to pan one left in the sends. We're going to pan one right. We're going to send them each unity gain to the ambience bus here. And there, there they are, happily moving away. Oh, the meters, that is. And now we're going to add stereo imagery, stereo expander. We go post, we go pre-fader. And now I can mute these and just listen to this. So we're gonna to listen to this stereo expander. There it is back in mono. There it is in stereo, beautifully mono compatible. About 3 dB, maybe a little less off, but in other words, the stereo seems a little bit louder than the mono, but it's not too bad. Now watch what happens as we make this go wider. Whoa, back to normal and wider. Wow. And if you use this for your in your surrounds, it would have a really interesting wide space between front and back and left and right. If you wanted to go further, you could create an even more interesting situation by changing the EQ on your surround, this bus specifically. And we can do that simply by adding a parametric EQ and doing some fun little notchy bits, uh, you know, like this. The easiest way to do that, however, is to go EQ graphic EQ like this, and then just kind of mess with some of these sliders between 500 hertz and 5,000 hertz. Now listen to this. Sounds like a weird comb filter that's been going on. So we can reduce this, reduce the effect. Maybe even help a few things out. And that sounds quite a bit different than our friends over here. Oops. And if we were to move them in easily, together, this otherwise mono ambience has a massive sound. And if you're able to listen to it in quadraphonic or, I mean, in the 5 1 space, surround left and right front, left, and right, you'd have an amazing stereo sound, uh, so, sorry, surround sound in what was otherwise mono. Remember, please get stereo or, or, or surround ambiences, use those. But if you're stuck, this is a great workaround. Super cool, right? Super useful and so easy to do in any digital audio workstation. But what's great about Audition is it comes with this built-in graphic EQ, and so it makes it so very easy. If you're trying this or if you want to know how to do this in a better way, come on to the cinemasound.com forum and let us know what you think and ask questions. And my staff and I and even some of the people from Adobe show up and answer questions for you about everything that you need with Audition, Premiere, Media Encoder, and all those things. And if it's just a straight digital audio workstation question, well, I'm happy to handle that too. Until then, we'll see you in post. Even if you're